facing insurmountable circumstances and wondering, can God still be good even in this mess? Even when we're in it, friends, God's promises still ring true. Even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for God is with us, standing shoulder to shoulder. Friends, take hope, because Jesus, the overcomer, stands shoulder to shoulder with you and with me. In John 16, Jesus even shared these words. He said, in this world, you may have trouble. <laughs> he didn't actually say that. I, like, I wish Jesus said, in this world, you may have a little bit of trouble. There may be some bad things that happen to you, but Jesus didn't say that. What does Jesus say? He's, Jesus says, in this world, you will have trouble. But he didn't put a period there. He put a comment instead, and he says, but take heart, for I've overcome the world. What that tells me and what that tells us, friends, is that no matter what we may walk through, when difficult circumstances will come our way, when they do, we have one who stands shoulder to shoulder with us, and he is the overcomer. And when you have the overcomer, the one who conquered sin, death, and the grave, the one who overcomes all things, when he stands shoulder to shoulder with you, there is nothing too far or nothing impossible for our God. What makes Jesus an overcomer? And what makes us an overcomer as a result as well is that when we live this life, if I were to sit down and we were to work through the room, and if I were to ask you, are you perfect? <laughs> we would all respond pretty quickly, nah, I've made mistakes. Every one of us in this room, we've fallen short and we've made mistakes. And when you've made mistakes in light of a perfect, holy God, there's a separation that happens. We can't be in perfection when we're in brokenness. So there's a gap that forms. And as much as we've tried to get our act together on our own, to clean up ourselves and to get us back to God, we only find that that gap is insurmountable on our own. And rather than God allowing that gap to continue, the Bible says God put on flesh and entered our neighborhood. Jesus, God in flesh, lived a life among us, experienced pain, was tempted and tried in every way, and yet still lived this perfect life. He chose to die on a cross to pay for the mistakes that you and I have made. And then three days later when he rose from the grave, what that meant for you and what that meant for me is that that gap that once divided us, divided us with God has now been bridged by a cross that Jesus brought forth for us. And now all who place their hope and trust in him can find life with him. So you may ask, what does that require of me? Because that's a free gift. That's a free gift for, over, for an overcomer's life. Not only for in this life, but in the one to come. And that gift, what it requires of you and what it requires of me, is faith. It's a simple yes. Jesus, I trust you, and I follow after you. That gift is available for you and for me. Jesus invites us to stand shoulder to shoulder with him. Will you stand with him? Let's bow our hands and let's pray together. Lord, we are so thankful for the hope that we have in you, for the gift of eternal life that we can find in you. That in this life, when difficult circumstances happen to us, we know that your promise rings true, rings true that you will never leave us and forsake us. Even when we walk through broken places in the darkest valleys, you are still with us. So God, may that hope ignite us to stand shoulder to shoulder with others, to choose to advocate, advocate and champion for one another. And God, if there are people in this room that have not said yes to you, make today the day, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, we all said together? Amen. Amen. Hey, we're going to lead into a time of communion. And communion is an opportunity for us to celebrate what God has done for you and me. And what's going to happen is we're going to give you a piece of bread and a little cup of juice. And that bread represents 
Jesus' body that was given for us, and that cup represents his blood that was shed for us. And you can eat those and drink that when you're ready. And when you do that, all we're doing is celebrating and saying thanks, Jesus, for what you've done. And we, we have the joy of doing that every Sunday, every time we gather here at Byron. And so I would invite you and love for you to participate with us. And so if you can be patient with me, okay? We've actually, uh, today we've got stations on the sides of the room, all right? You can see them, they're marked by white tablecloths. We're gonna invite you here in just a moment to go take communion, but also there's a spot there if you can with financial gifts or offerings, you can drop those in those baskets at those tables as well. If you're paperless, you can give online at livevibrant.com slash give. But in this moment, friends, it's an opportunity for us to say thank you, Jesus, for what you've done and for what you're doing in my life. And as we're all about to move together, if you need some prayer for something that's happening in your life, maybe um, you'd like to talk with someone about that, what that means to take your next step with Jesus. We'll have a few of Vibrant's pastors and leaders right down here, down front. We would love uh, to chat with you at some point while we're moving. So here in just a moment, I'm going to invite everybody to stand. We're going to sing a song. But anytime as you're standing and singing, coordinate with your row a little bit, okay? We've got to, like, be patient with each other. <laughs> but go find one of those stations, take communion together. And then when you're done, please head back to your seat because we've got one more thing that we want to share with you before we close out. All right? You can go ahead and go.